On July 26, 1984, at the age of 77, Ed Gein died here, in this building, the Mendota Mental Health Institute, here in Madison. Now, he was originally sentenced to the Central State uh, Hospital for the Criminally Insane, there's a deer behind me, uh, in Wappen, Wisconsin, and he was there for a long time, but that place was converted into a prison around 1977-78 and inmates were transferred all over the place and Ed Dean was transferred here. Now, I've read also that he was transferred because he did have cancer. That's where he died of respiratory failure from lung cancer. So I don't know if he was transferred here because of the cancer or because of the fact that it was being the other place was being uh, made into a prison. I'm not certain. There's it's just uh, it's two different stories, but whatever, this is where he passed away. Right here, Ed Dean died in this building. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be on this property. There's nobody stopping me, so. And you can hear lots of noises in the background. There are deer all over the place here. It's really beautiful to see. But yes, in this building right here, Ed Gein met his end. So I'm assuming that most videos about Ed Gein would concentrate on his life in Plainfield, Wisconsin, which is about an hour and 20 minutes from here, roughly. So. Let's go to Plainfield, but I want to start it here and show you Ed Gein's last place on earth, right there. Now I'm going to take you to Plainfield. <sighs> it's cold. Let's go. All right, so I've made it to Plainfield, Wisconsin, the home of Ed Gein. So let me tell you a little bit about Ed Gein. I'm gonna stand in front of a very famous spot having to do with Ed Gein. This is crazy. I'm just gonna give the cliff notes, or as we call them in Canada, the Coles notes of Ed's life story. He lived a very sheltered life on an isolated farm outside of the town here with an abusive father, physically abusive father, and a very mentally abusive mother. He left school after graduating grade eight and he lived on the farm. That's all he did. All he knew was the farm. All he knew was the family farm. His brother Henry and his parents George and Augusta. That was it. His mother despised women, said that all women were quote unquote whores and that women were no good and it basically it was uh, mental abuse and religious abuse that she inflicted upon Ed growing up so what happened was he began well okay let's go a little faster so his father dies father raging alcoholic he dies then the brother mysteriously dies on the farmstead I'm going to show you that farm where it stood soon then he's just left with his mother then his mother died this sent ed over the edge and he started robbing graves he boarded up all the rooms in the house that his mother used and left them completely 
um, untouched after she died, right? It's gonna allow for a second hold on here. Completely untouched. And lived in two rooms, the kitchen and the room off the kitchen. And then he started robbing graves of scaling the obituaries and finding out uh, what women around the age of his mother were reminded of his mother died and he would try to dig up those graves. Now it's estimated that he went on about 40 of these trips. 30 of them he did not come back with a body, 10 of them he did. And what he started doing was he was building a, well, he was using all the body parts for various things. And all those, okay, belt made out of nipples, lampshades made out of human skin, face masks made out of human skin, uh, gloves, a trunk covered in human skin, bowls made out of skulls. I think you get what I'm talking about. Finally, wasn't enough, he didn't, and then he was building a skin suit. Essentially, okay, you know I'm gonna go a little faster. He wanted to become his mother. He wasn't trying to become a woman, he wanted to resurrect the soul of his mother. That's what he said. But he committed two murders that we know of, that are confirmed. It's estimated that he killed as many as six people, but two he definitely did. And I'm gonna take you to both those locations. One is hard to find, one not so hard to find. I just recognize it immediately. Here it is, this is where he killed the hardware, hardware owner, Bernice Warden, right here in this building. The last receipt left was a receipt that she wrote out to Ed Gein for antifreeze. And the son, who was a deputy sheriff, knew that Ed Gein was in there the night before asking about saying he'd come back for antifreeze. Ed was not a, uh, a brilliant criminal. So he left that evidence behind. And here, in this building is where he killed Bernice Worden with one shot to the face, gunshot, and took her body in the hardware store car or truck back to his farm. And here's the building right here. Now there's a very, very famous photo taken from about this angle where you can see these buildings in the background. And right there, it used to say Wardens. hardware store right there and to this day it is still a hardware store let's go take a look but inside here this is the hardware store I don't know what's going on in there now it's not much of a hardware store now it looks empty but they're selling women's clothes off to the left there huh. This is where he committed his second kill of Bernice Warden. And her son, like I said, was a deputy. So he got, he called back up from here right away. They came, they figured out, they went to, uh, they called the house, Ed Gein's house. He didn't answer, but then they found out he was at a cousin's house. He was having dinner there. And they went there, questioned him a little bit, promptly arrested him. Then they went and searched the house. And I'm gonna be taking you to that, like I said, very soon. So I think I'm giving the basic information about Ed Gein. If you're watching this video, I assume you know a little bit about Ed Gein. Maybe you don't. But essentially he went off the rails after his mother died. His very domineering, very abusive, mentally abusive mother. And um, yeah, he started uh, acting out. I mean, he was socially isolated as a child. He had not a lot of friends, girlfriends definitely not. And uh, if you're a socially isolated child, you can get very, very damaged later in life. I mean, uh, I was reading all about the science behind it last night. Too much for me to understand, but it's like the front cerebral uh, cortex is where like your decision making is made. You think to how to how to plan, how to think things through, and that can get very damaged. Or, uh, perhaps if someone knows more about it, you can write below. It can get very damaged very quickly uh, if you're if you live that kind of life you don't have any interaction 
become that withdrawn. And he just didn't know, I mean, no sympathy for Ed Gein, but he really had no, I mean, he was beaten. He was mentally abused. He had no, nobody other than his mother. And then once she passed away, yeah, that's when they uh, hit the F, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, this story's gross. Okay, um, let's go to another location. So after Ed Gein was caught, the house stood here and it became like a tourist attraction, kind of like what I'm doing. Um, and people were coming out here and they were peering into the house, gawking into it. And then it was going to be put up for, the police spent a week clearing it out and uh, of the items, they were cataloged, the disgusting items I'm talking about, cataloged, photographed, destroyed. and. But then the house is still here and other contents and the, and the land. But it became like this, like tourist attraction. Three days before the house and property is going to be put up for auction, it mysteriously burned down. That would be, I would assume townspeople didn't want it to become a tourist attraction, a haunted house, so to speak. Another story I wanted to tell about this property was his brother, Ed's brother, Henry, who had begun to reject his, this is when he was 43, Henry was rejecting his mother's uh, strict uh, religious uh, teachings. It's snowing right now, by the way. Wow. Um, Ed and his brother went, and Ed did not like this. And also, Henry was dating a divorced woman in town, which was a no no. But Henry spoke out against his mother to Ed, really, and it like disparaged her to Ed, and Ed did not like that. So they went out to burn some of the land to, I guess it's like a thing to do to clear the land and get the soil ready for the next season. But the fire got out of control and the fire department came. And then when they put out the fire, I said, oh, my brother's missing. Now this was nighttime now. So they got flashlights and lanterns, that sort of thing. Flashlights and lanterns? I believe I read that, flashlights and lanterns. Well, I guess. Okay, so they weren't able to locate the body uh, with the flat, it was the dead of night. But Ed somehow managed to take them right to the right to the body. There were no burns on the body, except for bruises on the head. Now, that seems suspicious. So most people assume that Ed killed his brother here on the property. I do too. Uh, because and but the official, official cause of death with uh, death was asphyxiation. Uh, but yeah, so right here, this is Ed's. Ed Gein, I keep calling him Ed, like, too familiar. Uh, this is Ed Gein's driveway. I'm gonna show you some of the, what I can show you the property. So there used to be, uh, it's right, like, it's not even that far in the house. It was right back here past, like, the driver goes in and curve right there. So I'm gonna walk down and show you. There used to be a ton of, like I've read online stuff, ton of no trespass. Well, there's one. Warren, there's a no trespassing sign. Oh no, it's a high voltage, keep off. Okay, well, I knew that to do that. I learned that hard way. But if you look in here, we're gonna walk down along the property. You see that building in there? Now that's a hunter's shack. From what I know, this property is for sale still. But there's that red building right there. And the house is just in front to the left. Now, obviously, trees have grown since. And there's another little shack there, too, which is like a storage shack that belonged to the people who bought the property afterwards. But right about here, straight through, let me show you. Just past that sign, you can't really tell. I can see the clearing but and the house. You see the house right there. The, sorry, not the house, not Ed Gein's house. You can see uh, the hunting shack and then the other little building right there with that white with the snow on top. But straight through there would be where the house was. Right in that clearing there. Wow. It is desolate out here. And when the Geens lived here, nobody lived around this area for 
at least a mile was the closest neighbor. Whew. But there's other houses out here now. Not many, but they're out here. So there's the entrance right there, the driveway I was showing you. It goes right along here. It's where the house would have been right there. Yeah, this was Ed Gein's driveway. That is crazy. Right there. Okay, now I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna try to find it, it's gonna be difficult, but the location of where he killed his first victim, Mary Hogan, and I'm, we, we don't know if that's his first, right? There's other, like, two men were, were missing, a 15-year-old girl was missing, and a lot of it was attributed to Ed. They're not sure if it was six or it was just a two. But here we are. Uh, and I'm going to head out now to try and find the location where Mary Hogan's tavern used to be. Okay. Out on these little streets around Ed's place, it's so desolate and barren. Like some of the streets weren't even paved, really. I mean, people do live out here now. But down near, like, I'm about two minutes away from Ed's place, it was really just... I don't get creeped out, and I always say that on my channel, like, I'm not, I don't get, I, but there was a creepy feeling, I gotta admit, it was weird, just having that, I don't know, just being there, near where those horrible things happened, or, well, and what he did in that house, it was just creepy around there, and I see so many, I just saw another deer, uh, so many deer around here, but, yeah, it, it's a little, it's a little creepy. Have I mentioned yet how desolate it is out here? Well, I mean, there's some houses around me, but it just seems so, so desolate. This lonely country road out here in Wisconsin. But here I found it. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to find it, but I knew it was at Highway D and Elm, north of uh, Plainfield. Finding this was not easy. Highway D is Country Road D, and you can't find that. I couldn't find Highway D on a map anywhere on GPS on my car or my phone. But I managed to find it eventually. And here's where Mary Hogan's Tavern once stood. This is where Ed Gein officially made his first kill. Well, he shot her, and they later found a mask of her face at his house. Ay. Yeah, and um, uh, what I want, I, something else I forgot to add earlier, uh, the other woman that he killed, Bernice Warden, the deputy that was her son, he found her body hanging in Ed's uh, barn or one of the houses on the property, one of the like buildings on the property, I think it was a barn. He actually found his own mother's body decapitated, hanging upside down. I don't think know if he found, and the, the head was in a, uh, now Mary, her head was in a burlap sack, that's right, Bernice's. I hope he didn't find that. I hope another police officer found that. But this is Mary Hogan, this is where her tavern was. She was a loud, boisterous woman. She reminded Ed of his mother in terms of looks and physical appearance, not so much in the way she conducted herself. And uh, she was like a tough talking, you know, fun type, the opposite of Ed's mother. But something about her reminded Ed, and he took her life here. Right here. So here it is. Mary Hogan's old tavern used to stand somewhere on this property right here, but this was the driveway to it. All right, you and I, you're together with me on this journey. This horrible, sickening journey. But it's interesting, I hope. It's interesting for me. I've always wanted to see these locations and now I am. 
and now you are too with me. And now we're going to one final location for the video. And I think you know what that's gonna be. Let's go. And finally, we end up here. Now, this is a gravesite of Ed Gein and his family. His mother, his father, and his brother. There's three headstones, four people. Ed Gein's headstone was stolen years ago, I think in like 2003 or something like that. And uh, I believe it was like a rock band in Seattle had it. I don't know if they're trying to auction off on eBay or something, but uh, it was brought back here and people were chip away at it, chip away and chip away when it was here, uh, taking, you know, souvenirs. But it's locked away in the local police station here, probably never to be seen again. So there's no headstone here for Ed Gein. I'm gonna show you their graves right here. So here's his father, George Gein. 1873 to 1940. Mother, Augusta W. Gein, 1878 to 1945. Henry S. Gein, 1901 to 1944. And Ed would be right here. Some people have said that he's buried here in between his parents. He's not, he's buried here. This guy was a real piece of work, beating, beating children. <sighs> Henry seemed to be the only, you know, I'm sure he had some issues, but seemed to be the only sensible one out of this family. But here we are. Now this is a really small town, to say the least. Uh, so he robbed a few cemeteries in the area. I don't know how much he concentrated on, on this exact cemetery, but what's most ironic about this story is his second known victim, Bernice Warden from the hardware store, is buried right here in the same cemetery. Literally, I don't know, 100 yards, not even, I don't know, from Ed Gein. She's right here, I passed her grave as I was coming in. That's, <sighs> so she's right here. If you look, Bernice Warden is right here, and then Ed is right over there, like, not far. All it reads is Warden. So there is Bernice behind me, hopefully resting peacefully. When it's a murder victim, I always have that feeling that, feeling in my gut that how can they be resting peacefully? It's an uneasy feeling, uh, but yeah. So this uh, driving through Plainfield, interesting stop. Yeah, I wish I knew where Mary Hogan's grave is, I don't know. And uh, 
for other people that he murdered. I hope they're resting peacefully as well. And to the people that he, lack of a better term, dug up. I hope they're resting peacefully too. Okay, have a good day. Bernice Warden, rest in peace. Peace out.